Um, I'm going to get out of the queue and let uh, Anna Lee do her thing. You're going to love what she has to show you tonight, and you'll be inspired. And um, when she's done, I'll come back in, and we'll have a little prize time. And uh, off we go. Welcome, Anna Lee. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, I hope you can all see me okay. I'm trying to adjust my quilt here in the background just a little bit. Glad to see everybody. Um, what I'd like to do tonight is first show you some pictures from the book, and Lisa will help me by bringing up some pictures. Um, she already showed you my front cover, which is um, Thoroughly Modern Dresden. Oh, i got to get used to this camera. Here we go. Um, there is the picture of it. Um, the cover quilt um, that you see on the cover there is what I call a sampler in that it shows a variety of different sizes and uh, the different ends that the Dresden can be made out of, which is just the beginning of being able to be modern and really creative with the Dresden. So let's look at some quilts. Lisa, you want to grab that uh, first quilt that is up? I can't remember which one I showed first there. Here you go, this is the cover quilt again. And you can see that there's that really large Dresden um, kind of in the center there, and it has what I call three-sided tops. And then a lot of the smaller Dresdens, the blue, the yellow, and the multicolor ones, those are uh, small Dresdens, and um, they have a variety of edges. And as you can see by looking at them, it just gives you a different look to each one. And then probably one of the most popular one is a split blade Dresden, which is on the bottom. You see that green with the light and the dark green? That's using a split blade, and that's very popular um, and very easy to make. People think it's hard, but it's not. I consider it uh, really a beginner project. So the next quilt we're going to show you um, is also a quilt that's in the book. There's 13 projects in the book. So uh, there's something there for everyone. This one here has been very popular. It's called German Chocolate, and it has the split blade Dresdens in it. And because of the value of light and dark colors, it um, really, really gives you a nice um, uh, three-dimensional look. Um, and I have seen students make this in uh, blues or greens or other colors like that, and um, it's really very successful. Men like it, so I find that uh, a lot of the men will see it in a quilt show and go, oh, honey, I want you to make that one for me. So, um, And then the next one we have here you'll see is completely different in that it's not as masculine as this one, um, made out of more, there we go, very feminine. Uh, this one has curved blades to it, and this was made out of a collection that is designed by um, Alex Anderson. It's a red and white collection. I call this Romancing the Red. And notice the edges. They're the round edges, and it gives a much more lacy look to the design, um, different, much different than the German chocolate. So it can be very creative. Also, you see how the Dresdens, the red section there, where those Dresdens, they're flipped back and forth, and they... Um, they make what I call a continuous design. And I personally believe that the Dresden is so flexible. I used to think that the log cabin block was very flexible, but the Dresden, it is endless what you can do with it. So let's see another one, and uh, maybe you'll be encouraged to try and do one of these designs. What do we have next? This was one of the last quilts that I designed for the book. And uh, this is a wall hanging, and what I really um, thought was very different about this one was I had added half square triangles into it. And uh, by adding that um, block in there, um, it does. It looks like a kaleidoscope, and it adds the star in the center and a whole other dimension. So you can just imagine uh, all that can be done. And let's see, I think, do I have another photo there by chance? I think, Lisa, one more. One, oh, there we go. I had to share this photo with you guys. 
Um, my book came out in 2009. I'm happy to say it's in its fourth printing. So exciting. And I was invited to go on to the quilt show with Alex Anderson and Ricky Timms. And here is Alex and I together uh, demonstrating my design. So if you are a member with the quilt show, please um, be sure to check it out. It's number 502. So you can see my demonstration as many times as you like right there. So that's just to give you a few ideas of um, some of the things that you can do, and I hope I've excited you. So now let's talk a little bit more about um, some of the techniques used. What was interesting was with the Dresden, when I first tried to make a Dresden, I sewed all those blades together, and they did not lay down flat. So I was discouraged. I thought Jesus was a beginner project, but in reality, to get that to lay flat was very difficult. And here I was making these circles that wouldn't lay flat, which, by the way, I had to come up with something to do with them. You want to see what I did? Oh, my gosh. Don't tell anybody, you guys. But I made myself a bra. Look. Do you like it? <laughs> Those resins didn't have to lay flat at all. <laughs> Anyway, I could, uh, you know, make more of those, but really I wanted to be successful with the, the quilt. So I came up with a technique that is called a stitch, a stitch and flip technique. So first let me show you what we want to do is we want to cut our blades out. And our blades look almost like slices of pine. And the way we do that is uh, Lisa had showed you a template which I designed, and CNT Publishing has um, produced it. And this template here will cut, I'm sorry guys, I'm getting used to which way to move my board here. This template will cut all the sizes, all three sizes that um, are needed. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm drunk or something. Here we go. <laughs> anyway, what we do here is the um, the... The template has lines down here at the bottom, and the lines are, you'll see the very bottom one is small, there's medium, and there's large. And what happens is you take a strip of fabric, and you're going to cut that strip. I have an example here. You cut that strip at a specific width. For example, for the medium size blade, we're going to cut that at um, seven and a half inches. I'm going to try and readjust my camera here. Just there we go. That's much better. So I cut my strip at seven and a half inches. And what happens is, for cutting the um, blade out, I take the template and I'm going to lay the template down so that the bottom line, the medium blade, is at the bottom of my strip. And then the top line will automatically end up where it's supposed to be. And then I cut on each side of the template. And when I'm done cutting, I will end up with a blade that looks like this. Here. So all the different tops can be cut out in the same manner. And the only thing we have to do now is we can construct the tops to make them look different. So you can make any one of the tops now out of this blade. So for tonight, I'm going to show you the easiest top, which is the um, peak top blade that you saw in the German chocolate. And what we're going to do there is we're going to take this top and we're going to fold it on the wide side here. We're going to fold it in half and we want to stitch across the top with a quarter of an inch. And once we stitched it across, let me find my sample here. Um, we are simply going to be flipping that around, and we'll have a peak top. Give me just a sec. So here's my sample with it stitched across the top. Okay, stitched across the top. I'm going to clip the corner where the folded edge is. And then I take this and put it in my hands here. Sorry about the camera. Here we go. I've got it in my hands. I'm pressing open that um, quarter inch seam at the top and then I'm going to turn it around and poke my finger in there and then I have a peak top. Isn't that easy? And once I have my peak top here, I just want to press it so that the seam is down the center of the blade and now I have my finished blade. There you go. That's how easy that blade is. 
So the other blade tops are made in a different manner, um, the curved top, the three-sided top, and you'll just have to check out my book for all of those demonstrations. But once you have our, your blades, now we're ready to go ahead and sew those blades down on our block. So I'm trying to grab my samples here for you. And if you're a crafty person, I have a couple things to show you towards the end here of um, some craft things you can do with the Dresden blades also. Well, what we're going to do is um, to get the blade sewn down onto the block, we take our block here, and this is very much like foundation piecing. Can you see my block okay? I probably should have used a darker piece of fabric here. And I have in the back of the book, there is a template. It's called a placement template. And what it does is you set it down on your block in the corner. And we're marking a curve down here and the seam. At the bottom of the seam, I'm marking, and at the top of the seam up here. And that helps indicate for me where I need to sew and where I'm going to be placing my blades. So once those are drawn on my block. I'm going to begin by taking my first blade and laying it down on my block. And what I'm doing here is I have the blade laid down. Can you guys see that okay? And I have the bottom of the blade down here so that the corners of the blade are resting on that curved edge. And I'm making sure that the blade is down the center of this square here along the diagonal. Okay. I pin that in place, and now I'm ready for the second blade. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second blade, and I'm laying that down on top of the first blade here. See, it's laid down on top. And then where the markings are for the stitching at the top and the bottom of the blade is where I'm going to sew. I'm sewing along this edge right here, and once I've sewn that, I flip it. Very much like paper piecing, or if you've ever done um, like uh, crazy quilting. So we're sewing this all down on the foundation of our block. So once I have the second blade on there, I'm then going to put my third blade down, which is this one right here. And when I put that one down, it's going to be sewn again along that uh, seam there, and then it should match up along the side of the block. Thus, it's going to lay nice and flat. Once I've gotten that side done, then I'm going to move over to the other side. We've done these three. Now I'm moving to the other side, laying that blade down, again stitching it from bottom to top, flipping that over, and I have one more blade to put down, and then my first quarter of the block is done. And it's nicely flat. So I need to make four of these. Here's the last piece here. Sew it and flip it. Once I have this block done, I would make four blocks, and then I would put all four blocks together to make one big circle. And that is really the basis on my technique, my stitch and flip, te flip technique with the Dresden. Um, so I have found in class that students feel very successful with it. Um, they don't have Dresden bras like I do, but they are successful with it. It lays flat and it's very flexible. I want to show you just a few things that you could make um, using the Dresden blades, not necessarily using my, <laughs> using my technique, but they're fun items. One item is I have a pattern, and actually, Lisa, I was thinking of sending this pattern with our giveaway for whoever wins tonight. This is a pin cushion pattern, a little Dresden pin cushion. Isn't that fun? Um, and actually, if you go on to the quilt show, you can download this pattern for free there also if you guys are uh, part of their members. Um, so anyways, it's really kind of fun, and it's decorated in the center here with rickrack and a little button. And then another item I've come up with is a little candle mat. You see, it's just a little Dresden. Whoops. The blades are sewn together. And then instead of having um, a background block, 
there is, it's backed in a fabric. So you're making this like a pillow. You make all your Dresden blades. Then you put the backing fabric on the top, sew around the outside edge and turn it. And this is what you've got. And um, it's very cute to set on the table and put a glass with candy in it or a candle is really nice, a little candle mat. And if you uh, make more than one, you can stitch those together and then run them along together and you have yourself a table runner that just keeps going. Um, could be two more big bras. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> I got to get off the bra thing. I know. See, it was my garment uh, background that got me into that. So um, I don't know if you guys have any questions. I wasn't able to follow along here. But while I've got your attention, I have to tell you that I've been in invited again for 2012 to be at a Silomar Empty School Seminar so if anybody is wanting to go, I'm in session five, so you can come and we'll just have a great time together and get your um, get your Dresden done at a Silomar. I want to show you once again the um, template that was designed for my quilt, which is really very helpful for cutting. And more good news. Now, you have to have this for next year to get you through the year. I was fortunate enough to be invited to be in the Art of the Quilt calendar for 2012. Woohoo! So my, count, my quilt is the first one. Um, when you open it up, there you go. Isn't that great? Let's see here if I can get that picture better. This is called um, Amazon's Horizon. So you can get the directions for that quilt along with um, 12 other quilts here in um, the Art of Quilt calendar. So with that, Lisa, I'm not sure if anybody has any other questions or if there's anything else that I could... Um, oh yes, I am the centerfold. Isn't that funny? <laughs> Luckily they didn't get me with my bra on. <laughs> So here we are. Thank you guys so much for joining in and um, hope you just all um, had a great time. And I'm going to let uh, Lisa jump in here and then uh, see if you have any more questions. Yay! Yes, there were some questions, Annalee. I wrote them down from earlier. Uh, somebody had a question about uh, when you were talking about point the point of the blade, lining it up with that. Uh, center um, curve at the bottom corner of the block. She was asking whether you line anything up to the outside, opposite edge of the block as well. So I'm just, I'm just going to read off a few questions and then uh, invite you to come back in the room to answer, okay? Um, let's go ahead and get in the, back in the queue, Annalie. Uh, the second question was, uh, somebody wanted to know what fabric line or what fabrics you were using for your little step outs that you just showed us because they were cute. If, if it's not part of a, a, some older stash, if you know who, what the fabric is, that would be great. Um, and then another person had a question about whether or not you should press in between each blade as you're assembling. And um, I'll ask the rest of the questions later. So, Annalie, go ahead and hit Ask to Speak. And can you come back in and answer those three questions? And I will. And also, um, there's, I don't have any information on a new book right now. Um, but her book and the template and the calendar are all available at your local quilt shop or um, at uh, CNT's website or Amazon or several other kinds of places. Okay, here's Annalie for those questions. Hi, good question. Well, listen, let me explain to you um, a little bit more. I got this upside down here. When I was lining up that first blade, let me get my square on here. When I was lining up that first blade here, sorry, uh, here we go. There we go. Here is my circle down here at the bottom, and it's going straight up to the corner. So what I do to, to get that center line is I take a ruler and I lay it down from corner to corner and draw a line on there so that I can make sure that I have the blade centered where it needs to be. I hope that answers your question. Um, the fabric line that I'm showing my step outs with, isn't that cute? I went to market in 2009 
And this was a brand new company. They're named Blake, B-L-A-K-E. And I actually still have this fabric. So if you want to email me and you're interested, um, I can probably do yard cuts or half yard cuts if you're interested at all. Um, and I could send that out to you. And my email is annalee at earthlink.net. So let's see, there was another question. And I can't remember what it was. <laughs> How funny. Um, so anyway, there you go. Those are two answers anyway. So I'm going to let Lisa get back on and see uh, what's next. Hi. Um, okay, so there was a question about uh, treating the ends of a peaked blade. I had, I had said that you could have the choice, depending on what you like, of leaving those loose and flappy against the block or appliquing them down, but maybe you want to speak to what you prefer and whether there's any disadvantages to either way. Um, I, Raven, I think that's what you're asking. T-Bat, okay, good. There's another question right there for you in the chat room. I won't, um, I won't bother reading that because you can read it, uh, Annalie. So Annalie, go ahead and hit um, ask to speak. The last question from before was about the pressing. You talked about pressing the seams to, for the two blades to lay side by side, but then they were asking about any further pressing in between the blades that might be necessary to, to get it to lay flat. And people, if there's any other questions, uh, now that um, Annalie is kind of watching the chat room, um, go ahead and type them in. All right, let's get back to when we're putting down the blades, and um, I've sewn them on, and I'm um, done sewing my seam and it's flipping over. The question was, do you press them? You want to be careful about pressing because if you have any kind of marking with pins on here, marking where you're sewing, um, that could get uh, set permanently by pressing it. So don't press it with an iron. What I would recommend is doing finger pressing with that. Um, and as you can see with this block here, your block, when it's done, you have uh, the blades here on the top. They are free, you see, and they are finished in the back on the peak top because it basically gets like a self-lining there. And what you can do is you can choose to applique this down if you want, and you can choose to do um, hand applique, machine applique. You can do a decorative stitch if you'd like. Or a lot of times I will choose not to applique that down and when I'm quilting I'll just come along and quilt along the top or do a decorative design that just kind of comes over the top. Um, sometimes I leave them completely free. I'm going to get me a sample here just a sec. Um, see if we can get you to see this on, on the camera. Here is a top here, this curved one, and the quilting design is just coming up, and it's a swirly design that comes up close to the edge, so I didn't have to applique that, nor did I applique this top here. This is a black and white top, and in the quilting process, I just came along and quilted along the top point. Um, so in, for that reason, you do not have to do applique, and a lot of the gals like that. They like the quickness of that, of not having to, um, to applique. So I'm checking to see any other questions here. Stitched and clipped for the fabric tips again. Um, okay, I'm going to uh, let uh, Lisa take over again and see if we have any other questions or anything else that we'd like to cover. Um, yes, Cindy was asking whether or not you could show um, again how you stitched and clipped the fabric tips. And I told her that there's plenty of time if you'd like to reshow that little technique that she's asking. Oh, and then Pam um, has a question about fussy cutting. There was a quilt that I showed earlier. I don't remember if it was the gypsy quilt or the red quilt that um, somebody was asking, I believe it was Pam, whether the fabric in the center was fussy cut or whether you created that um, by um, blades. Huh. So, yeah, and Ruth Mary, that's a good point. You can watch the replay, absolutely. Um, at any rate, Annalie, uh, pop back in for one last time and let me know, uh, let us know if you can uh, answer that question about showing how to stitch and clip. <laughs> All right, here we go. I believe what you were asking is on the peak top, 
we've taken the blade and we've folded it in half and we sewed across the top here. And what I was saying was on the folded edge, we want to clip that corner off so that when we turn it around, we don't have the bulk there. So I'm just clipping the corner of the seam allowance at the folded edge. And then um, I turn that blade around. I press it open. Oh, I'm sorry. There you go. Press it open, and then I turn it around. And then I have my peak top blade. All right? That's how that goes. Boy, my memory is terrible. You asked me two things, and I can only remember one. <laughs> Oh, gosh, I think this is so new to me, um, uh, chatting this way. So, anyway, there you go with that. And, Lisa, thank you so much for having me. I just enjoyed everyone being here. Thank you so much.